Okay, and we are live. Uh, thanks everyone uh, for joining Jenkins Online Meetup. Today is uh, May 19th, and we have Nikolai who will be uh, presenting the story of migration from manual jobs uh, to um, uh, Jenkins Pipeline with job DSL. Um, and uh, let me share my screen and do some quick introductions. Okay, uh, so this is my screen. Mm, if you have no, yeah, cool. If you have never participated in Jenkins Online Meetup, um, uh, this is an event we organize on the Jenkins community. Uh, basically, we invite contributors to share different stories about Jenkins, uh, to present the demos, uh, uh, to share uh, any kind of experiences, and we invite everyone to participate. Uh, you can ask questions uh, during the presentation, um, and uh, we also invite you to participate in uh, the future events. Uh, thanks to uh, uh, Continuous Delivery Foundation and Cloudbees uh, for helping us to run the platform. And yeah, let's move forward. So, speaking of contributions uh, to Jenkins, uh, we have recently published a new page which uh, summarizes uh, all the contributions. So, if you're interested in various aspects like just sharing your stories, meeting people, uh, contributing to code to documentation, uh, please don't hesitate to do so. We invite uh, all people to participate in the project. And the next week, you have a good opportunity to do that because we run a UI UX hug fest. Uh, basically, it's an event where everybody is welcome to contribute to different stories. I believe that during this presentation, we will hear some runs from uh, Nikolai about particular aspects of user experience. And you're welcome uh, to contribute and to improve the situation. And uh, you can also get special uh, t-shirts um, and other prizes. Uh, so if you're interested, uh, please join us. Um, it's going to be a quite a big event. and uh, Hopefully it will be fun for all the contributors. Uh, we're also looking for speakers. Um, if you're interested in presenting a Jenkins online meetup, uh, again, any story which is related to Jenkins, yeah, including using Jenkins in different environments, into integrating these tools, using particular plugins, everything is welcome. Uh, recently, we have hosted a new page for speakers, so you can go to Jenkins online meetup, and there are some guidelines. And right now, we have a public call for papers proper, uh, process, so you can just submit a, an email, and we will process that. So, uh, everyone is welcome. Uh, also, uh, just a minute of advertisement. Uh, right now, uh, later today and also tomorrow, there will be a Cloud Disconnect event. At this event, uh, there will be a number of presentations about Jenkins, uh, for, uh, specifically about troubleshooting Jenkins, uh, part, uh, processing clocks, uh, integrating Jenkins with different tools. So if you're interested to learn more, it's a good event uh, you could uh, follow. And it's not too late uh, to register and participate if you're interested. Okay. Now let's go back to our presentation. Um, uh, so we will uh, be doing the presentation in a webinar mode. Uh, you are welcome to ask any questions in uh, Q&A. Uh, so if you open the Zoom panel, uh, there is a Q&A button. And uh, there you can ask any question. And uh, we will be answering some questions off offline. And for other questions, uh, we will uh, keep them uh, until the end of uh, the presentation uh, so that Nikolai can uh, answer them. Uh, and yeah, we reserved a lot of time today for that. Uh, for Flying Kony, you can just uh, contact Nikolai on Twitter. And also, we have shared a feedback form. Uh, so, any feedback will be appreciated. And thanks to everyone who submitted feedback during the previous meetups. Uh, we uh, processed that and we will make sure to take it uh, into account. For example, today we do less polls. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, that's it from me. So speaking of polls, uh, yeah, it's our way to get feedback. And if you don't hesitate, I'll actually run uh, one just to see what uh, um, uh, job uh, management uh, tools you use. Just a second. And promise it will be the only uh, poll today. Okay. Is it running? Okay, uh, so while we run the poll, I'll just stop screen sharing so that we switch uh, to the presentation by Nikolai and Nikolai can introduce himself.
and Nikolai. unmute. There we go. Excellent. Thank you very much, Oleg. I want you to let you know that for the most part, my user experience with Jenkins is great. All right. So welcome to the talk from Freestyle Jobs to Pipeline with JobDSL. My name is Nikolai Grasholt. I am a DevOps consultant. I work at Eficode. I help our, the organizations. We help with uh, Jenkins, Docker, containers, Kubernetes. I'm a certified Kubernetes administrator as well. And I spend a lot of my spare time on just playing around with Kubernetes, playing around with Jenkins. I absolutely love good documentation, great examples and great proof of concepts. I like building them. I like using the ones that other people have built. Um, so yeah, I spent my, a lot of my time, fortunately, just hacking around with this. And I've opened my DMs on Twitter. Um, please be nice. Don't ask like help desky questions. But if you want to chat about Jenkins, containers, Kubernetes, more than welcome to send me a message. All right. So during this presentation, there's going to be a lot of demos. And I'm going to show you a lot of examples. But don't panic. Everything you see is what you get. Um, so I've created this uh, example repository um, with demo resources. And these are all the examples that I'm going to do today. Um, they're here. You can even open them in the Google Cloud Shell so you don't need to have anything but a browser on your computer. And um, don't worry about the link either because you also get uh, the slides in handout format. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. All right, so from freestyle jobs through naive job DSL or native job DSL to pipeline. But um, so a quick disclaimer, when I talk about the freestyle jobs, I talk about manual freestyle jobs. So I'm, I'm, not, like, I'm not bashing freestyle jobs. I think they're great. I think they've gone, done a lot of great stuff for us, um, but it's the manual configuration of it, that tedious process that I want to uh, say bad things about in a second. So without further ado, uh, freestyle jobs and the five stages of grief, also referred to as the Kubler-Ross model. Um, the first stage is denial. So we think that the manual freestyle jobs are a great way of working. Um, second stage is anger because we start to experience this configuration drift. I don't know who's been changing my jobs. I don't know. Uh, I, I can't reuse my jobs. I could split the individual build steps up to into uh, different um, parameterized jobs and then they could call each other and I would get a tiny bit of reuse, but it's incredibly hard to manage and keep track of. Um, I don't have reconfiguration of my jobs. I, with, if I lost my Jenkins or lost my jobs, I would have to manually click all of my jobs into Jenkins again. And I'm just losing, I'm losing my work. I'm losing so much time and I'm just losing my will to continue working this way. Um, the, the next stage of grief is bargaining. So I try to, um, change the way we work. I talk to my colleagues, like, can we agree on how we make changes or can we agree on how we create our Jenkins and manage it? But uh, this leads to my depression because it's not working. My colleagues aren't following the instructions 100%. I'm not following the instructions 100%. And that's okay because maybe the instructions are too complex and intricate to actually work with efficiently. Right? So the last stage of grief, the acceptance stage, maybe manual freestyle jobs aren't that great. All right. So I want, I want something else. So I want pipeline. I want configuration as code. And I want my pipeline jobs in Jenkins, but I can't just put them into Jenkins. So I need, I need to put them into Jenkins somehow. So how do I get them in there? Well, I could create a job for my pipeline and add my pipeline to it. Um, but uh, then I, I keep clicking in Jenkins still, but that's okay 
because I have the specification of my job as code. So at least it's it's slightly better. Um, it doesn't scale very nicely because then for each of my pipelines, I still have to click them into Jenkins. Um, so I'm I, it's just a pipeline job, um, but I'm still clicking just a pipeline job for every single job that I have. So the acceptance stage, this isn't working out for me. Um, so I wanna try something else. What if I wrap my Hello World pipeline in job DSL? I can do that. Uh, and then I can add that manually to Jenkins. Okay, so that would actually allow me to reference all of my pipeline jobs from the job DSL. And I'm not clicking as much in Jenkins anymore, which I really like. So I've solved my clicking problem. Um, but I still have this change by modification. So I'm still making changes to the hello uh, job DSL wrapper whenever I have a new pipeline. Um, so this isn't actually making me like completely happy. Um, so what about this construction with a, with a pipeline wrapped in a hello world job DSL wrapper, wrapping the job DSL wrapper in a seek job DSL job, and then having the seek job DSL job added to Jenkins. Well, this would allow me to dynamically reference all of the job DSL from my one seek job DSL job. So I would put them all in a Git repository. My seat job DSL would just add all job DSL in the repository. And whenever I have a new pipeline, I just add more job DSL to the repository. So I get this change by addition, which means it's very unlikely that I'm gonna break something else that was previously working. Cool. So, uh, this and a disclaimer about the stars thing. So I'm kind of using them like a grading system, like which way of working is better for the wrapping of pipelines. Job DSL is absolutely awesome. So it might as well have three stars. It's just for like discerning between the two that they are different. So this is my focused goal. This is what I want to build. And uh, this is what I'm going to show you how to, uh, where, how to get there uh, today. So talking about job DSL, um, every slideshow needs a quote. So my quote comes from the job DSL plugin. Uh, it's a groovy DSL for Jenkins jobs. Sweet DSL is just a domain specific language. So it's not an actual programming language but it makes sense in the context of job DSL, in the context of the job DSL API. So uh, a crash course in job DSL. This is a hello world job. First, I have a job tag. It means that I'm creating a new job, a new freestyle job. I give the job a name. So I name this one hello world. My job has a bunch of build steps. So it's in a steps block. This job has a single build step. It's a shell step. And the shell step is echo hello world. And uh, just to show you that I'm not making any of this up, you can actually specify a job like this. We are going into the first demo of the day. Yes, hands on. And I like that. And uh, so I've cloned the repository onto my computer. I've opened it in VS Code. So you can see here all the folders. There's the readme. We'll tell you about the repository. The first exercise was called Hello World. So I'll open the readme and get it into a kind of visual mode. So put it over there. And it's gonna tell me that the first step is create a new freestyle job in Jenkins. I'm going to go to my Jenkins and uh, I'm going to take a deep breath because the Jenkins I'm actually using is a Jenkins that I'm running in a container and you get that as well. It's in the basic JCASC folder. There's a Docker file. There's a readme for how to build it. 
it's configured with Jenkins configurations code with all the plugins you need to do the demos. And lastly, if you don't have the Docker installed, you can open the entire thing in the Google Cloud shell and uh, you can run it from there. It's uh, specified in the, uh, in the companion repository you get. All right, so the first demo. So the purpose, to show that we configure a Java's code. So create a new freestyle job in Jenkins and call it demo seed hello. So I'm going to create a new job and call that demo seed hello. It's a freestyle job. And it has a single build step. The single build step is a job DSL step. So I'm going to process job DSL and I'm going to use the provided DSL script. The DSL script is in the hello world groovy. So I'm going to open this one, copy and paste this and save it. Then I'm gonna run the job. And when I reload, I will notice that my hello world has been created. And there's a typo in my, um, in my companion repository. And I can build it while I look at the configuration. So the configuration of the hello world job, it should echo hello world. And uh, when I look at the result of it, I can see that it echoes hello world. So with this code, paste it into a new DSL job in Jenkins. I'm actually able to create a job without clicking around in Jenkins that runs a shell step that echoes hello world. Cool. Right, so now I have my uh, hello world job DSL and I've created my demo seed hello job in Jenkins. Um, it's not exactly where I want it to be, but I'm getting there. We, we now know that, I, that a job DSL job can create another job. Um, I can actually also inline this job. So I can create a seed job that creates another job. So instead of having a shell step, I have the DSL step. And then I'm actually providing the job DSL inside the job DSL. All right going to show you how this looks. So the demo is called seed hello world inline. Seed hello world inline. And I open the readme. And it's going to tell me that I should create a new job in Jenkins and call it demo seed inline. So I find my Jenkins and I create a new job, call it demo seed inline freestyle project. I should copy and paste the code from seed hello world inline groovy. And that's the file next to it in the companion repository. It looks like this. So the same as the slide reproduced here for completeness. I copy and paste this into a build step which is a job DSL step. And I'm using the provided DSL script. I save it and I run it. And when I reload, I can see that it's generated an item. So this seed inline job, I can run it and look at the configuration while it's running. So this job actually also has a build step, which is process job DSLs, which is the inline job DSL that I added to the seed job. The indentation is very off, but um, yeah, it's there. And when I look at when it's run, I can see that it's also generated an item. So it's generated the hello world seeded. And when I go into this job, I can run it while I look at the configuration. I can see that it has a single build step. It's a shell step that echoes hello world. 
And when I look at the job after it's run, I can see that it echoes hello world. All right. So um, now I have actually created a job in Jenkins. There was a job DSL job that had another job DSL job wrapped inside it. So I can create job I can create jobs that create other jobs that create other jobs. Okay. Um, it's still not entirely where I want to be, but we're getting into the idea of jobs generating jobs. Uh, caveats about this. So in my Jenkins that I have running, I've turned a uh, job DSL script security off. Um, you should have that on in production and only uh, clear the scripts that should be allowed to run on your Jenkins masters. Um, but for demo purposes, it's nice to just turn off. Uh, you can also fix the formatting with the strip indent of Groovy. So the indentation becomes nice when, uh, when you're looking at the configuration in Jenkins. All right. So, uh, but I wanted my, my job DSL in another file and not inlined in a job DSL file. So how do I, how do I get there? Well, um, I can actually reference an external file. So rather than provide it as a, a string inside the job DSL, I can reference an external file. So the idea is here that I have a repository with a couple of files. I check them out from a Git repository. And then the seed external job will generate the job in the hello external file. Um, but I uh, told you that I was going to show you a lot of examples. And of course, this is not going to run because uh, it's just like Soto code. Uh, I can't just copy and paste this into Jenkins. Um, but there is a demo. I'm not going to show it, show it to you. I'm going to show you where to find it. So it's in the companion repository. It's called hello, uh, seed hello world external. There is a readme that takes you through the demo. And the reason I'm not going to show it to you is because I am, of course, checking it out from an external repository. And when you start doing demos with uh, third party dependencies, things break and things take time. So it wouldn't be as interesting to look at. But you can do this on your own time. And uh, it works because I just did it uh, hours ago. So it should still work. All right. So the cool thing about referencing, a, referencing an external file is that I can actually reference files using wildcards. So I can dynamically reference a number of files. So if I have all of these different groovy jobs in my repository, I can just use this any seed groovy job. So check them out from the repository and then just create all of them. And when I want to add a new job DSL job, I just put it in the repository. I run my seed any job again, and then it's going to be added to Jenkins. So I get my change by addition and not change by modification. All right. So this is what it looks like when I have my external job DSL referenced by a seed job. So this could be the any seed. And then I click the any seed job into Jenkins. And then I have my jobs in Jenkins. Awesome. It's not it's still not entirely where I want to be, but I'm getting there. So talking about the Hello World pipeline. So um, I'm assuming that you already have a number of manually configured freestyle jobs um, that you would like to have as pipeline, or maybe you already have some job TSL that you would like to have as pipeline. Um, in this talk, I'm going to show you how to get the freestyle jobs as naive job DSL. And afterwards, I'm going to show you how to get the freestyle jobs as pipeline. All right. So um, from the manually configured freestyle jobs, there is a number of 
uh, paths I can take to get to the pipeline. But no matter which path I take, I still have to get out of the manually configured Jenkins jobs in the first place. Um, adding some labels to this, I know that I can actually get out of a manually configured uh, Jenkins job instantly and get into some configuration as code by just wrapping the job. This is interesting. All right. Secondly, I know that I could convert my manual job to native job DSL, but that would take me some time. And I know that I can configure my freestyle jobs to pipeline, but it might take longer time. And this is the reason that I chose, I have a project that I've been working on with some um, Counter-Strike servers running in Kubernetes. Uh, and I can't manage everything myself. So I'm using Jenkins for this. I'm clicking all my jobs. And when I got tired of that, I did the naive conversion because I could do it instantly. And I wanna show you how that looks like. So the third or fourth demo, depending on if you're doing them, uh, doing them all, uh, job DSL. I'm gonna show you that a Jenkins job is actually already as code. So it's there in XML in Jenkins. I'm gonna show you the job DSL to wrap the XML and I'm gonna add it to Jenkins just for sanity checking. So we can see that it actually works. And I did this last month in a uh, meetup, Jenkins online meetup, the configuration is code of Jenkins, but I'm going to do it again, just to show you how fast it actually is. So the demo is called job DSL. There is a readme and the purpose to show you that we can almost instantly convert a job from a manual freestyle job to naive job DSL. My prerequisites are a job in Jenkins and I should get a copy of the XML to job DSL template from this repository. So the companion repository for the other talk, because why recreate stuff when you've already done it once. So I'm going to take a copy of this and I'm going to create a new file here. A uh, new file and call it XML to job DSL template Groovy. All right. And um, then it tells me that uh, I should replace the XML job DSL part here with the context of contents of my config XML file. And I can get the config XML endpoint from a job in my browser. Okay. So going to Jenkins, I, uh, I actually already have a hello world job, so I can reuse this. I can go to config XML and I get the XML specification of it. I can do the view page source to get the raw output. So I want to copy that. And then I want to edit the uh, the template. So it also has some instructions. I'm going to delete those because I've streamlined the instructions. I'm replacing the XML job here. Then it says remove the XML header. I'm removing the XML header. And lastly, I should give the job another name. So I'm going to call this um, hello world in wrapped up DSL. All right, congratulations. You've now converted your job. Cool. Um, so this is job DSL now, and I can use this in Jenkins. I can create a new job. I can call it the hello. Uh, I will call this demo seed wrapped job DSL. Software developers are great at naming things. That is a lie. And uh, a single build step, it's a job DSL build step. I'm using the provided job DSL script because I just wrote a job DSL script. 
I'm going to save it, run it once, reload, and I can see that it's generated my job, and I can run it while I look at the configuration. So I, here I can see that it's actually created a job with a single build step, which is a shell step that echoes hello world. And when I look at the output from the run of the job, it says echo hello world. Cool. Um, so you can um, look at why this works on your own time. It is extensively documented. Uh, I really like writing documentation. It is a, yes. All right. So I just instantly converted a manual freestyle job to job DSL using this wrapper. Is this cheating? No. Uh, I like my workflow is not like inherently through code. I can make changes uh, to the job through the UI. I could go into configure and change it. And then I could uh, take the config XML that it, I generate in Jenkins and I can persist that in Git again. I can just wrap the new config XML that I get. So I have my job configuration under version control and I can easily reconfigure my Jenkins by using the dynamic seed groovy. If I just have the wrapped config XML in my job DSL repository. Cool. Um, but I'm also not entirely done because having to go to the UI and making changes to my job and uh, wrapping them in XML every time becomes a bit tedious or uh, wrapping them in job DSL becomes a bit tedious. So I would like to have them as uh, the native job DSL or the, or a Jenkins pipeline. So um, this is the story that I originally wanted to tell you because now I have my naive job DSL and I can convert that to native job DSL or I can convert it to pipeline. Um, converting it to native job DSL looks like this. I think it's super cool because it's an XML that you're just reading with the configure block, uh, which is a cool thing of job DSL. It allows you to interact directly with the XML, the config XML of a job. So I can iteratively uh, I can iteratively unfold this. I can do the small iterations to change my naive job DSL into pseudo naive job DSL until at one point I'm at the native job DSL. And uh, then I can take the large leap of configuring, reconfiguring my native job DSL to pipeline, which is nicer than taking the huge leap of just having my naive job DSL that I'm configuring into pipeline instead. Um, and uh, on the topic of large versus huge, well, it depends if you have a hello world job, then the uh, difference in size probably isn't that big. Or if you have like small jobs in Jenkins, then you can probably go directly to pipeline instead without doing the iterations. But I wanted to try doing the iterations. I had this idea in my mind that by the power of the configure block, I could unfold the XML and I could iteratively convert it to job DSL with using that as my elbow grease. And um, I, I tried it and it turns out it is just crazy tedious. It's very time consuming, but it's a super safe way of doing the conversion because you are taking the small steps and software developers sometimes like doing small steps um, to like have a safe, way of refactoring, but um, at other times you might be able to comprehend taking bigger steps at a time and getting further at a time. So um, without further ado, I'm going to show you uh, the job DSL iterative demo and uh, converting six lines of job D, uh, of XML to four lines of job DSL with only 20 slides and uh, how to put an audience to sleep. Um, no, I'm, I'm not going to show you this, but I have the chapter. Um, so if you want to take a look at it, you should uh, totally do it. It's nice to know that you can actually do this. And I created the demo. 
uh, it's here in the job DSL iterative folder. You can see the different iterations. So this is a hello world job and I'm going through different iterations and I'm converting it in to job DSL to the native job DSL. Uh, I have the animated slides. So you can see I'm going here. I want to change my description. Um, and uh, during these slides, I, I change the XML specification into some nice job DSL. It's nice to know that you can do it. You, yeah, um, I tried it. Uh, so why is this iterative approach nice? Like just to repeat it, if you you only have this representation of your job, the, the UI representation, right? The other representation is the config XML. So if you have a very complex job that you want to turn into job DSL, you either have to do it in one go from the UI or you can wrap it in the uh, configure block and then you can unfold it. Do it if you have to. It's nice to know that it's there. I'd like to show you the job DSL API um, because I think it's super cool what they have done. Um, so they've actually made this interactive page where you can click around through the API so I can find the job uh, clause. So um, when it's uh, loaded, it takes a second. Uh, and under job, I can find, so I know that a job has steps, so I can find steps and I can even open here so I can see examples and I can find the shell step. It's uh, down here and I can click it so I can see an example job that uses a shell step. This is very cool. I think that is a thing that is very, very cool is that it actually tells me Apart from the limited built-in API, Job DSL supports many more Jenkins plugins at runtime. The complete API is available in your Jenkins installation on this URL. So if I go there on the, sorry, on the Jenkins that I am running, when it's loaded after 30 seconds more, depending on the number of plugins you have, it'll actually show you the support it has for your plugins. And this makes it very nice to work with Job DSL. So um, the, the API browser, like the, 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 the basic one is great. The one that's on your Jenkins is absolutely great and very relevant for how you can, for what you can do on your Jenkins. So that is very cool. So uh, great work on the user experience in the Jenkins community. Um, so I, I, had this, I had this thought, I had this dream of, of doing this, this way of working, right? Um, but, uh, and just, so, so I had the naive job DSL that I've wrapped in, the, the config XML that I've wrapped in job DSL, I do the, uh, iterations with the configure blog and unfolding, I get the native job DSL. And then in the end, I have two DSLs. So well-defined DSLs for how to do work in Jenkins. And I should be able to relatively easily translate one into the other in one go. So um, it turns out that this is actually not the way I would recommend working. Uh, rather, I would recommend that if you have a, a lot of jobs, a lot of complex jobs that you can't directly translate to native job DSL or pipeline, do the naive conversion, wrap them in job DSL, wrap the XML in job DSL, just uh, get them as code. And then afterwards, go back to the UI and convert them to the native job DSL or convert them to pipeline. And uh, native job DSL, it's well-defined. It'll work for all plugins. Pipeline is well-defined and it'll probably work for your plugins. I just want to elaborate on that. So 
it'll, it's going to work for all your plugins with native job DSL because of the configure block. Because the configure block can interact directly with the XML. If the authors of the plugins haven't created the DSL, then you can just write the XML directly and configure the job. And you can get inspired by what XML you should write by looking in the config XML of a job you've clicked. It's tedious, it's hard, but it's nice to know that you can do it. So you can get everything as code. What I would recommend that you actually do is to use well-supported plugins that are actively maintained, that are updated and probably have support in pipeline and that you get your things converted to pipeline. But use job DSL if you can't use pipeline. Don't stay at manually configured freestyle jobs. All right. Yes. So the path I chose, the path I did for my project is that I first converted it to the naive job DSL and secondly, I converted it to pipeline. So talking about pipeline, why not, why, why am I talking so much about, about pipeline, right? I've already told you the cool things job DSL can do. You can wrap an entire uh, job in it. You can uh, configure any plugin that you have in Jenkins and job DSLs. So why do you want to go away from it? Well, um, pipeline can do a number of cool things. So from the uh, Jenkins uh, documentation, uh, you get the things as code, you get better durability, you get the ability to pause jobs that are running. They become more versatile, which means you can do more stuff with them in the world of continuous delivery. Um, and they are extensible, you have it as code. So you get all the benefits of software design patterns and templating and shared libraries. Um, the things that are interesting here is the durability and the possibility. So because we already have it as code with job DSL, they are versatile. We can do anything with the groovy language. They're extensible. It's a programming language. We can, we have the templating, but the durability, a pipeline can be automatically restarted when a Jenkins master restarts and it can be resumed from a point. So you're not actually, you're, you're, you might not even be losing jobs if your Jenkins master is going down. When it comes back up, your job will continue or your job will restart. You have the possibilities, you can wait for user input. I'm not sure that you can do that in job DSL. Um, I think you'll have to trigger some downstream drop jobs manually and then maybe reuse artifacts. You can hack it in job DSL, but it's nice that it's natively implemented in pipeline that you can take this user input halfway through a pipeline. Um, the documentation is here. So why do you want to go to pipeline? And uh, they of course add the as code as well, but it's for the durability and the possibility I want pipeline rather than job DSL. All right. So how do we do the pipeline? Well, here's a crash course, a hello world pipeline. First of all, I have the pipeline tag. I'm specifying that I want a new pipeline. I give it agent any because my pipeline doesn't have any specific requirements as to where it should run. It has a number of stages. The first stage is a hello world stage. The hello world stage has a number of build steps. This one has a single build step. It's a shell step and the shell step is echo hello world. All right. Um, so reiterating the topic large versus huge. Well, here the difference isn't that big, right? Um, so there's two points to make here. You might want to go directly to pipeline because we're just using the shell build step. It's natively implemented in pipeline. It's there. The second point I want to make is the difference between the two. So they actually look quite similar, which means you haven't wasted your time. If you are converting your jobs to job DSL in the first place, 
because you can't go to pipeline because at a later point you should be able to make a relatively easy conversion between the two it's two well-defined dsls all right so i know that i can get my code as pipeline now excellent but how do i get my pipeline into jenkins um well i want to use my hello world job dsl wrapper of course but i don't want to wrap job dsl anymore i want to wrap a pipeline so instead of creating a job i create a pipeline job and then inside the pipeline job i add a definition so that's the definition of my workflow i add it from the cps so that means a groovy continuation passing style it's the way i'm writing my code in groovy and i'm supplying it with a script i'm just gonna inline it it looks like this with the hello world job from before and it totally works i'm gonna show you the demo hello pipeline inline i'm gonna show you that the job dsl from the slide works so that we can actually just wrap a pipeline in job dsl and I have the disclaimer that the script security is still off uh, because it makes it easier to demo things. So the demo was called Hello Pipeline Inline. All right. Um, so to show that we can configure a pipeline job with JobDSL, it's going to tell me to create a new freestyle job in Jenkins and call it demo seed hello pipeline inline. So I'm going to find my Jenkins and hmm, did I close that one? I probably did because I opened the I opened the job DSL uh, API and then I closed it afterwards. All right, but here we have it. So I want to create a new job and I want it uh, to be called demo seed hello pipeline inline. I'm still creating a freestyle project because I want to wrap job DSL. And the job DSL that I want to wrap is in the seed hello pipeline inline groovy file. And the last thing I did before uh, we started today was to uh, move all of the code into separate files because I thought that would be easier. But in retrospect, it makes it way harder to have all of the files on the same page. So yeah, uh, we learn uh, while we do. So I have added the pipeline, uh, the job DSL pipeline job. It has the inlined pipeline. I've created the seed job and I can run it to generate my job. And if I reload it, I can see that it generated my job. I can run it while I look at the configuration and it has a pipeline. So this one doesn't have a build step. This one has a pipeline block where it has a pipeline configuration. And that's because it's a pipeline job. And when I look at it after it's run, it has the first, first stage. So the hello world stage, it has, I can click here and I can click on the locks and I can see that it echoed hello world. Awesome. Oh, back into the presentation. There we go. So I have my hello pipeline inline job with which is my pipeline in a job DSL wrapper. I've added it by the demo seed job DSL wrapper job. Um, but what I actually wanted was to have it in a separate file. So of course, just like we did with uh, job DSL, we can make this construction as well. So this is what it looked like when I had it inline. So I have my hello pipeline inline job with the 
pipeline code inlined in the job. But I can also reference using the CPS SCM. So I'm referencing that my uh, Jenkins file, it comes from some Git repository. And then when I check it out, the Jenkins file should be in my workspace and I can create and I, and I have the job specification from that. So that's uh, how the job will be created. All right. And my hello pipeline, I can reference that in my hello pipeline seed job, either directly or with wildcards to get it dynamically, but just for the construction. And I'm done. I have the, I have the, I have my Jenkins pipeline file. I have it referenced from my hello pipeline job DSL wrapper. I have my job DSL referenced in my seed job DSL. So I can reference a number of jobs. I add this manually to Jenkins, but that's okay because I'm just adding one job and it's going to add my entire platform of Jenkins jobs, right? So, um, I would like to introduce you to uh, freestyle jobs and the five stages of configuration as code or the configuration as code model. So it's a bit different than the model for grief or Kubler-Ross model, but uh, please um, uh, stick along. So the first step is confidence. I feel confident. I know who changed what, when, and from which values because it's in version control. I'm using well-defined workflows that we use for software development. In my example, I'm using Git. So I know what changes have been made and what the current state is without having to go into Jenkins and figure it out. I feel value. I feel valued. I can reuse through shared libraries with pipeline I can use software design patterns because it's groovy. It's programming language. I don't feel like I'm wasting my time. I'm not doing tedious tasks, clicking around in a UI just to try to keep up with whatever configuration I want my pipeline to be in. I feel relaxation. I have the automatical reconfiguration of jobs. So I don't care about my Jenkins master. If I have it in pipeline, I might not even care at all what my Jenkins master is doing because it's just going to, it's still going to restart my jobs and run them. It's still going to have my things. I feel collaboration, which is not an actual emotion, but it should be. I'm working with my colleagues. We're not working against each other and I'm enjoying working with my colleagues because it's not, it's not like we're on a battlefield. We're actually working with each other. And I feel happiness because this is a great way of working. So yeah, we did it. We have, we are from, from freestyle manual freestyle jobs into pipeline and we are adding our pipelines with job DSL and we're managing our job DSL in a sane way. Nice. So does this get better? It actually does even because, so I told you about this change by addition, change by modification. Um, I of course want to use the wildcards. So I just want to have my job DSL seed jobs or the, sorry, the job DSL wrappers in a Git repository. And I want the super seed job to just reference this repository. Like give me all the job DSL in this repository. And it gets better. Because I can put the super seed job into the repository. Sorry. And it can reference itself. So it's constantly keeping up with the current configuration of it. And I have the configuration of my super seed job under version control. And it gets better, as you saw when I accidentally clicked on the slide, because I don't have to manually configure my first super seed job. I can add that to Jenkins if I'm using Jenkins configuration as code. So no clicking at all, 
just a readily configured Jenkins with all of my jobs. But that's a thing for earlier. So we actually did last month um, an online meetup. The configuration is code of Jenkins for Kubernetes. Uh, in parentheses, moral of the story being, if you just get your Jenkins uh, jobs as pipeline job DSL, and if you just get your Jenkins configured as code, afterwards putting it into Kubernetes is trivial. So, thank you. Any questions? Yeah, uh, thanks for your uh, presentation, Nikolai. Um, yeah, again, if you have ask, if you have any questions, please uh, ask using the uh, Kone feature in Zoom. And we already have uh, a number of questions. We answered some or some are offline, but let's start uh, going through the test. Wonderful. So one question from Vlad. Um, it would be interesting to see here uh, uh, pros and cons of using uh, job descent versus uh, Jenkins pipeline. Right. So the pros of using job DSL is that you have everything configured as code. It's an uh, old way of doing it, which means it's tried and true. It works and it's going to work for all plugins because you have the configure block. The pros of doing it with pipeline is that you get the uh, restart, you get the resume, you get the durability of your jobs. If the Jenkins master crashes, your jobs will uh, might even still be running and able to pick up where they left. Um, so, yeah, that's the so the cons of using job DSL. You don't get the durability of pipeline. The cons of using pipeline, it might not be implemented for all the plugins that you use. But you should of course use updated and well maintained plugins. Great. Anything to add, Oleg? No, I think it's a great summary. All right. Thank you. But yeah, personally, I use a pipeline uh, almost everywhere. Uh, but yeah, I do appreciate the value of job days there, especially uh, in conjunction uh, with uh, JCASC. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next question, uh, just like concourse, uh, can we do all of these, create pipeline, write pipeline, etc., through common line? Uh, poof, that's a great question. Uh, Jenkins has an API, I know. And you can uh, fire uh, post requests and get requests to it. So yes, but what I'd like you to do instead of using the command line, because now you're just sort of like scripting your way out of your creating like long shell scripts that will create all of your pipelines. I would like you to create the pipelines in job DSL and then reference the job DSL in the seat job and then reference the seat job in your JCAS configuration. So when you start up your Jenkins, you're not firing off your Jenkins post install script and waiting for that to continue. You're just starting up a Jenkins that's configured with all of your jobs and all of your plugins. Oh, Oleg, you're muted. If anyone is interested in uh, Jenkins CLI, I shared the link in the chat. So yeah, Jenkins has extensive CLI. Actually, now we have two implementations. One is official in Java, another one is uh, unofficial in Go, but uh, you can uh, take any of them and you can create a job they sell jobs so that you can uh, invoke them to uh, generate the final jobs. You can also launch them. So in principle, yes, you can do anything uh, uh, using CLI. Okay. Let's move on. Uh, how can uh, you change a job that is already migrated uh, to job DSL? So I think that uh, Oleg, you had, you wanted to do another meetup at some point, referencing some tools that could help you. Oh yeah, uh, I can actually quickly uh, show them. Uh, Just a second. 
So in uh, Jenkins, uh, there are tools which allow uh, um, uh, doing some uh, migration. Uh, for example, uh, Nikolai has presented tools uh, uh, for job DSL, but also there are similar tools uh, which allow to, you to migrate to pipeline directly. So for example, I'm showing you declarative pipeline migration assistant. So it was created by uh, Liam Newman and uh, Olivier Lamy. And this tool actually provides some uh, API which uh, supports doing migration. So you can uh, generate a declarative pipeline code or a very similar tool for scripted pipeline if you want. Um, and then you can glue them with job DSL so that uh, you can incrementally do changes if needed and uh, still do all the changes as code. So yeah, I hope it answers the question. And, yeah. Thanks for that. Uh, so uh, let's move on. Um, the next question is, have you tried uh, the same for Maven jobs? For Maven jobs, so instead of having my manually configured job as a freestyle job, I would have it as a Maven job. I have not tried that. Um, but I would expect that if the job is in uh, if the if the job is available in Jenkins, you could find the config XML, and you could convert it using the wrapper. And I would expect job DSL, the API, to have um, the to have a Maven job, just like it has a job. Yep. So in principle, Maven jobs and freestyle jobs they're quite close. They use the same internal abstraction called abstract project. Um, it might be a bit more difficult if you want to migrate, for example, uh, promotion jobs from promoted builds plugin, though there is still some integration with job DSL, uh, and uh, you could use that. But uh, yeah, all uh, classic jobs should be supporting uh, job DSL well. Uh, if you use inheritance plugin or something like that, yes, it's a completely different story, but for Maven jobs, it shouldn't be a problem. So if I just quickly share my screen, then you can see here in the Jenkins job DSL API, you have the Maven job on the left. And if you click on it, you can see examples of what a Maven job looks like. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Okay, thank you. So the next question, or would it be possible to define the dynamic C job with JCask and the without manual steps? Yes, it is. And <laughs> yes, it totally is. And uh, I even know, I know the person who's asked this question, but he, I didn't tell him to ask it. So I actually did this in the last presentation. And if we look at the, so, this is available on the Jenkins online meetup as well uh, as a previous presentation. But so this companion repository had a demo for, um, for also bootstrapping a, a Jenkins configuration as code with the job and uh, looking in the advanced examples of a Jenkins configuration as code. If we look at the Jenkins configuration as code YAML file, you can see that you can actually supply a job so I've supplied one job, which I've called super seed. This super seed job references a URL. So this is the configuration as code Jenkins as job DSL companion repository. It uses credentials because it clones over SSH and then it runs all of the job DSL in the repository. And if you want to see how you automatically trigger this as well, uh, it's explained in the, in the other video. Thank you for that question. Cool. So we answered uh, six questions. We start from six questions. Now you have nine to go. Oh, so, wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's continue. We have some time. Uh, so uh, the next question is from Ellie. Uh, what testing framework can you recommend to test the Jenkins as code uh, with job DSL and pipelines? Oh, that is a great question. We actually talked about that internally. Um, Oleg, do you have an answer ready for that? 
Well, I have uh, some answers because we do some testing. Uh, for example, uh, yeah, I can probably show some examples. Um, just well, I cannot show so, good examples for what it was, uh, but yeah. Uh, so yeah, let me share my screen. Do you see it? Yes. So uh, there are some uh, foundation bits uh, for testing. For example, if you want to test pipeline, there is a framework called pipeline unit. Uh, so the, uh, okay. uh, Jenkins pipeline unit. This framework basically allows uh, doing some uh, unit testing for Jenkins pipelines. It doesn't uh, allow doing uh, job day self testing. For job day self testing, for example, what I would use and uh, what uh, I'm planning to document in the near future. There is a framework called um, yeah, uh, Jenkins uh, File uh, Runner uh, uh, Test Harness. Uh, so uh, please don't be afraid about the name. So Jenkins File Runner is a completely different project. It's fast capability for Jenkins. Uh, but good news is that if you follow full configuration as code with Jcast, with job DSL, with pipeline, you can uh, uh, run your project not only as classic Jenkins, but on also as Jenkins file runner. There are tools for that. And you can use this framework for integration testing. Uh, so uh, it's what I'm currently working for Jenkins pipeline library. Uh, but yeah, basically this framework allows you to package your Jenkins instance to Jenkins file runner and then run this instance as a common unit test. So it's quite handy. It's under development, but if anyone wants to try it, please feel free to reach out to me and I will be happy to share some examples. And I'm planning to do a Jenkins file runner uh, demo maybe next month at the Jenkins online meetup. So I will be happy to share that. Okay, I hope it uh, answers the question a bit. Uh, but yeah, work in progress, but we are well aware that uh, this area is important and in the Jenkins project, we want to offer better tools for that. Okay, uh, so I'll share the links afterwards. And yeah, the next question is, uh, what are the best practices uh, to avoid dependency held with plugins? Yeah, maybe it doesn't relate to the talk, but I thought that it's important to briefly discuss this question. Yeah, sure. Um, I don't have a good question. Mm. Don't install a lot of plugins that you don't need. Uh, there is, uh, I think there is a plugin that will tell you which jobs use which plugins, and then you can export that. And then you can try try to figure out: Do I have any plugins in store that I'm not actually using? Um, so I would recommend it, use as few as possible <laughs> to solve your to solve your problems. Um, I'm used yeah. to the the phrase "dependency hell" coming from con conflicting dependencies, and uh, the simplest technique I've ever seen was use the plugin manager itself and let it handle worrying about satisfying the dependencies. When I tried to manage dependencies outside of the plugin manager in Jenkins, I tended to have much more of a challenging problem than if I let the plugin manager do the job. Yeah, plus one. And right now we are working on uh, better plugin management tools. So if you are following Jenkins Online Meetup, uh, last year we were presenting uh, uh, plugin installation manager. Uh, yep. Plugin installation manager tool, which already offers some tools for advanced diagnostics, for example, showing available updates, um, also showing security warnings and other things. So this tool is already available. You can use it. Um, it has uh, its own limitations, but uh, you can try it uh, for better plugin management. Uh, we plan to keep adopting uh, features from that, uh, for example, in official Docker images so that uh, they have better analysis of transitive dependencies, etc. cetera. Um, it's in our plan. Same, uh, for example, if you use tools like custom work packager, uh, there are uh, some, so some features which uh, verify uh, compatibility of plugins. Uh, it's an advanced packaging tool, but uh, it can be also used uh, for configuration as code. And yeah, this is what we have in the development for users. 
but we also try to address the plugin uh, management uh, on the developer side. So, for example, yesterday there was a meetup with James North. Uh, he presented uh, a bill of materials um, and uh, new enhancements um, in plugin forms for plugin developers. So it's not something like we uh, totally rely on users to properly verify dependencies. We also invest in uh, the Jenkins tooling so that plugin uh, developers can ensure that, that there is no binary conflicts and then uh, that uh, we can uh, ship um, uh, better um, and more stable plugins to Jenkins users. So if you're interested, you can go to the online meetup page and you can find the recording here. And there are more tools uh, for Jenkins plugin developers uh, available uh, and hopefully we'll have more online meetups about that soon. Okay. So yeah, it's a long question, uh, but yeah, uh, uh, there are different uh, different tools which allow to check that. Okay, uh, next question is: apart from Groovy, does uh, this support any other language? I guess Job DSL and Pipeline. Um, Oleg, do you know that? I actually, I, I'm not sure. I expect not. I'm happy to answer this question. So, yeah, it's not me who asked that, but uh, I would be happy to ask it on my own. So for Pipeline, uh, you may have seen the recent news so that we now have Pipeline as YAML plugin, which is in, in the incubated state. So it's uh, under adoption. And uh, if anybody wants to try it out, uh, please do so. And uh, surprisingly, it uh, supports defining Pipelines as YAML. Uh, for job DSL, right now there is no such capability, uh, but yeah, technically uh, it would be possible to implement that. Um, and I guess you could uh, raise feature requests and maybe contribute it on your own. So practically it's possible, um, but yeah, it has a lot of uh, potential difficulties if you want to do that. For pipeline, yeah, we, are, we would welcome any user feedback. You can install it. It's available in main uh, Jenkins Update Center. So you can just find it. And if you hit any issues, yeah, there is uh, GitHub issues in this project. So yeah, please try it out and let's, let us know what could we improve there. That looks very cool, actually. Yeah, so it's a new from, feature. Coming from Kubernetes, which is cool and in YAML. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, mm, uh, the result of ongoing uh, changes in Jenkins, and uh, yeah, they, we will keep shipping changes. Okay, so we answered uh, more questions, and we still have ten questions to answer. <laughs> so, wonderful. Uh, yeah, would uh, we like to go to continue for another maybe fifteen minutes, uh, so that we have uh, answers on the record? Sure. Okay. Let's do that. And thanks to everyone who is still with us. And yeah, uh, we are recording uh, these questions if you have to drop. So the next question is, will it be easy to maintain Jenkins file and not the DCL files? Have a short DCL, but keep uh, all the flow in Jenkins file. Um, yes and no. So I would like to show you, because I, ha I actually have an example of this. Uh, from the last uh, meetup that we did with how it looks like when you're wrapping these Jenkins files. So I'm sharing my screen. I'm in the uh, companion repository for the other demo. So it had two other companion repositories. So I actually had my, my seed job repository with all the job DSL. And then I had my project repository, which was a uh, mono repo just for the purpose of the demo. So each of the folders, they have a Jenkins file. It doesn't matter that they are in the same repository because they are referenced individually from this job DSL repository. So the job DSL repository has the super seed job, which reads all the job DSL in this folder. And it has a folder for each of the pipelines. So the auth pipeline, for example, has an auth.groovy which references an auth pipeline job. It has a script path, so it's in the auth folder of the pipeline repository. And if I just move this to the side, 
you will see that if I look at the basic Groovy, it still references the pipeline repository um, and it uses a different script path. So sure, this is, this is Groovy. You could wrap this in a for loop and you could uh, try to figure out what all the files are in the uh, in the uh, in the in the pipeline repository. Sorry, that was over here, and then create so you could generate the uh, the job DSL with the job DSL. But I have found that this is easy enough, so I just have my super seed job, and then I have a seed job per pipeline. I'm also not able to add multiple pipelines in the same job DSL job because then it will just use the first pipeline that it finds. You could use, um, uh, what is, there are different job types in Jenkins. There is the uh, multi-branch pipeline job where you're actually adding an entire project. So if you're using Bitbucket or something like that, then it, it says that for all of the projects, for all of the repositories in this project, I will have a Jenkins file in the root. So whenever I create a new repository, just assume that it's gonna be there and then Jenkins will automatically create it for you. And then even when you start creating, creating branches, feature branches, things like that, it's gonna pick it up automatically in Jenkins. Thank you. But then I would have my multi-branch pipeline in JobDSL. <laughs> but I would then have one for the project in Bitbucket or, or mm -hmm. other. Yeah, that makes total sense. Okay, next question. Is there an easy way uh, how to avoid escaping uh, characters uh, from some advanced shell scripts? Not only about JobDSL, but also about pipeline. Mark, uh, do you want to comment? Triple single quotes, right? Isn't the only solution triple single quotes or triple double quotes? Yes, I, I'm well, not sure that even that doesn't really <clears throat> solve it because it's still, you're a language inside a language. And then when you're generating job DSL, that's generating job DSL, that's generating job DSL, you're right. right. You, I've, I've had 16 backslashes in a row because I was nested that deep. Unfortunately, there is no good way to do that. Yeah, Jenkins uh, itself, it has some uh, um, features which uh, escape things properly, well, or sometimes properly. For example, shell step, you'll try to escape the uh, string, um, etc. but uh, still all of it has a lot of limitations. But, but for the most part, the multi-line string will help you a lot. Yes, thank you. Okay, so the next question, uh, yeah, rather process-wise, is it possible to arrange a workshop to practice such things together? So, uh, yeah, as organizer of Jenkins Online Meetup, uh, I think we would be happy to host such workshop if somebody wants to conduct that. Uh, and maybe Nikolai does uh, a code program organize such workshops online. Uh, yeah, so we don't have any things like that in the pipeline, but um, and also it would probably be a paid event. So when I'm uh, doing things for Efficode, I'm actually on the job and I'm sort of, this is borderline what we're also helping customers with. So I'm not entirely allowed to give away all of the business. Um, but, uh, but yeah, if there is interest in doing such a thing, then I can certainly ask uh, someone if I am allowed, how much I am allowed to, to do. Yep. So if you're interested, please reach out uh, to Nikolai on Twitter. So yeah, it might be a public workshop, it might be a commercial workshop, but uh, yeah, if you're interested, uh, definitely <laughs> it's a good thing to ask. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the next question. Uh, when using uh, pipeline, use git checkout, uh, we are referencing to a single Jenkins file located um, 
uh, in a root git source. How can we store uh, multiple pipelines in a single repo? Um, that's a good question. You can create multiple pipeline jobs that reference the same repository and job yourself. Well, and because you're not entirely able to reference multiple Jenkins pipelines. Sorry. Yeah, multiple Jenkins pipelines from the same job in Jenkins. Well, technically so, you can, but yes, it's set in the open source commands. Uh, there are all options uh, are not that trivial. Uh, yeah, by the way, uh, there are uh, plugins which can simplify that, for example, a remote file provider plugin and other things which can help you to uh, mismanage uh, multiple locations of uh, uh, Jenkins files and pipeline repositories. But yeah, multi branch is quite limited uh, by default. Well, I would say opinionated, but let's be honest, quite limited. Yeah, actually, I, I, I challenge the phrase limited and instead say opinionated because I agree it is opinionated it's, and it's yeah. intentionally so. Okay, but uh, yeah, there are plugins which allow to alter the behavior. So uh, for example, uh, Utun Share Beckon, a maintainer of pipeline is YAML plugin. He is also a maintainer of uh, remote file uh, provider plugin for multi-branch pipeline. And if you're interested, you can try it out for this use case. Okay, so um, the next question. Can I fetch a job result from a normal HTTPS endpoint instead of GitHub? Uh, I guess yes. Um, if you can get access to the file and you can get it into your workspace, then you can reference it because it'll be in your workspace. So what I'm doing with the, with the Git tag in the job DSL is just to clone out a repository. And then I have the files in my workspace. But if you did a thing like you could, uh, you can of course like create new files, you can cat to files, you can curl download files, um, which you should always do authenticated. And then you will get them in your workspace and then you could reference them as external files from the seat job DSL. Yeah, I took from your earlier instruction that it's really helpful to have multiple files defining. And so whatever technique I use to get those multiple files in is great, but multiple files rather than one great big monster file that defines every single job in the whole system. Yes, so change by addition rather than change by modification. Because if I have this one big job with all the customizations in it, then it's very likely, very likely, more likely that I break some other custom configuration when I'm adding a new custom configuration. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, probably a job this could provide uh, more different engines. So similar to how a pipeline uh, provides different sources, etc. Job DSL could also support the uh, additional extensibility modes, but uh, I'm not familiar with the plugin code base, so I cannot say for sure whether it's already supported or could be implemented. Uh, but yeah, if it's not supported, it's definitely something uh, you could contribute to the plugin. Okay. But that's not necessarily a limitation of Job DSL, though, because like once you have it in your workspace. Yep. you have it externally. So whichever thing you can do to get the to get your specifications into your workspace, like curl it from uh, some location, copy it from the disk, anything that you could do in Jenkins before the build step, that is a process job DSL script that will uh, let you read any job DSL into a seat job DSL. Yeah, that's totally correct. Okay, so we answered two questions uh, at once. So the next question is, um, we have a large number of uh, freestyle jobs that already in job DSL, and we would like to move to pipeline jobs. What would be your strategy? Um, I would uh, l look at similarities in the DSL, and then I would, um, wrap the pipelines 
and add them. And then I would verify that they did the same thing, either by uh, looking in the configuration of the jobs, which become a bit tricky um, because you're still like comparing a pipeline to an actual freestyle job that you have in job DSL. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, would you suggest uh, using shared libraries uh, during this migration process? Uh, yes. If you, whenever you have, so like the first time you make something, you don't know what it's going to look like. The second time you make something, you kind of notice a pattern. And the third time you should be able to generalize. So if you have an overall way of working in your company or wherever you are that we always check out a repository, we always clean our workspace, we always end up pushing locks somewhere, then as much as the general stuff you can, put it in a shared pipeline and template the tiny parts that change and, and work with that. Um, there is a shared pipelines uh, documentation with a couple of examples that show how you can uh, actually create quite intricate custom pipelines and just parameterize them and then, yeah, um, create a, a number of of different jobs very easy using these shared libraries and using the templated uh, jobs. Right. And also if you create pipelines, you can test them. So we partially answered uh, the testing question uh, before. But for example, if you want to test pipeline libraries specifically, uh, we have a repository in the Jenkins project, Jenkins Infra Pipeline Library. So basically it's a pipeline library where which we use to test the Jenkins and plugins and other bits. So you can see that uh, there is a lot of uh, common steps uh, which we share between our pipelines. And here you can find examples of uh, tests uh, which have been written using Jenkins pipeline unit specifically for uh, building blocks which we use uh, to migrate our pipelines. Well, we migrated uh, long ago uh, in 2016, but still we extended this pipeline library and add more and more tests. And, uh, tests and uh, features for that. So you can check uh, this repository if you just want uh, to see a real uh, world example of a pipeline library with test coverage. And there is also a pull request for integration testing with Jenkins file runner. Uh, yeah, not finished, but it should be somewhere here. Okay. So uh, we are getting close to 30 minutes. Uh, four questions left. Would you like to finish that? Uh, like we can continue. Are you? <laughs> if I'm we fine. we can take the four questions. Okay. So yeah, we'll just finish the existing queue, and for the rest, uh, yeah, let's follow up uh, um, in our same channels. If you have any. Yeah, please continue asking questions on. Uh, there was the Slack. Uh, ask on Twitter. Like mm -hmm. we love talking about this stuff. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And probably next time we will do meet up uh, without presentation, just a discussion and questions, panel of experts yeah. session. Okay. We're growing into the presentation. Yeah, right. So uh, the next question, when you add a job DSL to your Git, do you still need to manually run the C job or can you run it whenever the job DSL repo updates? Yes, when I add a job DSL to my Git repository, I need to manually run the seed job, but that's because I didn't configure any triggers. So it doesn't trigger the job on changes in my source code management. But if I configured a trigger, I could either configure it to look for changes every second minute. Um, that's a bit expensive. Otherwise, I could configure it with a webhook to my source code management and then whenever my source code management changed, it would fire an event to Jenkins and then Jenkins would notice, oh, this job needs to run and then it would rerun my job DSLC job. And you should totally do the webhook trigger thing. Um, but if you like me, don't have your own GitHub or your own Bitbucket running, then you don't necessarily know where your code is actually going to be. So it gets hard to configure upfront. Yeah. I also don't have a Jenkins running right now. My Jenkins is like all my jobs are as code. My Jenkins is as code. So when I need my Jenkins, I start it and then I turn it off afterwards. 
Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So yeah, the next one, uh, how, hi, how uh, Jenkins can discover parameters in a Jenkins file without running a job once. Uh, so it's rather an architectural question. Yeah. Uh, so firstly, it really depends on uh, which pipelines and you use scripted or declarative because they process a bit uh, differently. Uh, but yeah, too long didn't read uh, Jenkins does a best effort of discovering uh, parameters using the abstract syntax tree. It may work or may not. And depending on the result, uh, it, will, uh, pro it will definitely cache parameters after the first run. So personally, my recommendation is if you really have to have pipelines with parameters, uh, don't rely on the first run. Yeah. So you, yeah. you can do some things where you trigger the pipeline and then you build into the pipeline that it will early exit if the parameters are not provided. Um, but yeah, there, there is no good way for Jenkins to know upfront what the job is doing because it actually doesn't have the job before it pulls the job and reads it. So there are some edge cases, for example, you can uh, put parameter property in a pipeline library, which you load dynamically using graph or whatever. Uh, I'm not sure whether I would uh, recommend uh, this uh, use case in a good conscience, but technically it's possible. I love that part. Technically it's possible. Know that it's there. Yeah. Okay. So the next one, uh, how to, uh, yeah, how to prevent the job the seller from detecting my job uh, changed manually since it was generated by the seed job after parameters ha has been added after the first run of my job. So I guess it's uh, a follow up of uh, this case. Never allow anyone to make changes to the configuration of a job that you have configured in job DSL. If you need to make changes to a job you've configured in job DSL, you're doing it for development purposes, and then you shouldn't do it on your production instance. You shouldn't hack around on it. Then you are creating the job in another place where you have rights to edit stuff, and then you edit stuff, and then afterwards you make the changes in version control, and then you rerun the seed job and you have your changes in production. Right. And uh, we're actually working on some uh, errors for that. So you can see that uh, if you go to the change log uh, of Jenkins, you can see a lot of system read references there. So yeah. basically, we are working on a read only UI thanks to Tim Jacob and other contributors who work on that. So uh, our idea is to have read only system configuration, job configuration, and agent configuration UI. There is a blog post which is staged right now. We are getting there, and if you're interested to participate, again, we have online hackfest uh, next week, and uh, actually, read-only UI is listed here. So we invite contributors to work on this story, so that we ensure that nobody modifies uh, configurations, uh, configured by configurations. Mm -hmm. That is awesome, yes. Because yeah, the reason I want to go to configuration as code, I like had it on the slide, right? The configuration drift. I want to know when changes are made by who and why and have it under, I don't want the random hacking around. Yeah, so it's coming soon. And uh, if you use weekly releases, you can already try it out. Okay, so happy to deliver good news. Even, even better, not just can try it out, should try it out in weekly releases because Jenkins 2.235 is next LTS. And so good time now to test it. Good time now to experiment with it. So LTS is coming with this capability. It's not here yet, but it's coming. Awesome. Yeah. Well, uh, there will be some incremental changes. So I think that it will be fully finalized by September. Um, but yeah, a lot of changes are already available. Okay, so the next question, uh, oh, it's not a question, it's just a comment. But yeah, yeah I, think we're, the comment. I think we're done. Yeah. Uh, uh, so yeah, thanks uh, to everyone for asking questions. Yeah, again, we got a bunch of them. So we will publish the recording, we will publish 
um, uh, all the questions, etc. It will take some time to process that, but uh, the recording should be available in 24 hours. Um, and yeah, I guess that's it. If you are interested to share any feedback, again, we will appreciate that because it helps us to improve our meetups. It also, we will also share feedback with Nikolai so that uh, uh, we can improve the presentations as well. And yeah, thanks a lot to Nikolai for doing this presentation. It was really great, a lot of uh, content to study and hopefully it was helpful uh, to everyone who participated. Thanks. Yeah, so yeah, recording.